So we have been factoring some binomials. And the factoring of the binomials that we've done so far is we've answered yes to the question, is it the difference of two squares? Because if it is, then we can factor it uh, pretty easy with a pattern. And then further from that, if it was the answer is no, then there is no such thing as the sum of two, pro of two uh, squares, but there is a such thing as the sum or the difference of cubes. So both of these, again, are based on a pattern. And let's see this pattern before we uh, freak out about it right there on your flowchart. So on exercise four, part A, given that x plus two is a factor of x cubed plus eight, write x cubed plus eight as a factor of, uh, of product of two factors. And we did this at the very beginning of the lesson, but this one um, has different polynomials in it. Now, look at the polynomial I'm dealing with here, this x cubed plus eight. x cubed is a perfect cube. And eight is also a perfect cube because it's two to the third power, <clears throat> right? So what we're looking at is the sum of two cubes. Since x plus two is a factor of this, and look, I can get that from just taking the cube root of x, I get uh, x to the third, I get x. Take the cube root of eight, I get two, right? Okay, so there's where that x plus two comes from. Let's do this by synthetic division, and let's see what the quotient is supposed to look like if x plus two is one of the factors. So I'm gonna put a negative two on the outside of the box. Draw my little box. Now this is cubic, but we're missing an x squared, so zero x squared, and we're missing uh, an x term, so zero x. So across the top, it's one, zero, zero, and then my eight. Okay, so now let's uh, do our synthetic division, pull down the two, uh, pull down the one, times it by negative two, uh, add them up, negative two, multiply, I get four, positive four, add them up, I get four, multiply, I get negative eight, Add them up, there's my remainder of zero. Definitely it was a factor. So what I have left over here is x squared minus 2x plus 4. Okay, and the original factor was x plus 2. So let's dissect this and let's try to figure out what the pattern is so that we don't have to do synthetic division every single time. Okay, so in the first set of parentheses, in the first factor, the x plus two, each one of those terms is just the cube root of each of these. Cube root of x cubed is x, cube root of eight is two. Okay, so then what's in the second set of parentheses, it almost looks like a perfect square trinomial, but it's not, okay? So look at this. Um, the first thing is <clears throat> the x squared comes from that first term squared. The last term comes from the two squared. Okay, so those two things are pretty easy to get. What about the middle term? The middle term just comes from the product of two times the x, it's just two x. If this sign in the middle is plus, that sign is gonna be minus, okay? All right, so now let's look at it with x minus two being a factor of x cubed minus eight. Actually, why don't you go ahead and pause and you do the same kind of thing that we just did on the last exercise, see what the quotient is supposed to look like. And let's see if we can figure out what the pattern is on that one. Okay, so go ahead and pause and you try to figure that one out. So did you notice a similar pattern to the previous one? This is what you should have gotten right here. Okay, so we we're missing the x squared again and we were missing the uh, x term, so we put zeros in there. When I divide by synthetic division, I get the coefficients one, two, and four, so it's x squared plus two x plus four. Okay, so looking at the pattern, it's like this. For the first set of parentheses, I just take the cube roots of each of those. It's kind of like the difference of two squares in that way, right? You did the same kind of thing. Cube root of x cubed is x, the cube root of eight is two. If this is a difference of two cubes, which this is, I'm subtracting two cubes, then I put a minus sign in there, okay? Now, the x squared comes from taking the first term and squaring it. The four at the very, very end is coming from that two in squaring it, okay? The middle term is coming from the x times the two, but if this sign is plus, uh, minus, then this one is plus. If I look back at the other one, 
Notice that if the first sign was plus, then the one in the second set of parentheses is minus. Okay, those two things switch. Okay, and the other thing that I want to point out is, even though this kind of looks like a perfect square trinomial, it's not, and further from that, that part will always be prime. Okay, it, as long as this is cubic and not something, something strange else that you could still pull something out from. But this thing that's left over is probably, you can't factor x squared plus 2x plus 4 any further. Okay? All right, so here are the patterns. They are also on your uh, flow chart. So we have a sum of two cubes and we have a difference of two cubes. So notice for the sum of two cubes, I take the cube root of the first one, so it's A. I take the cube root of the second one, so it's B. If it's a sum, then that term gets the plus sign. Inside the parentheses, the second term is going to get the opposite sign. It's going to get minus. Okay? Inside the second set of parentheses, I take the A and I square it. Minus, because this one's plus. You multiply these two things together, you get A times B. And then the final term is always a plus B squared. Okay, and then if I look down at the difference of two cubes, the only thing that's different is the order of these two signs. If it's the difference, the subtraction in it, the first set of parentheses has subtraction, but the second one has all addition. What's in the second factor is always prime. Okay, if you forget this pattern, you could always do what we did on the last couple slides Hopefully you would remember to just take the cube roots of each of those terms and get that factor, and you can just divide the rest of it by synthetic division to see what the quotient is going to be. Okay, it's like a fallback plan if you forget. So let's try to factor a couple of these cubes, difference in sums of cubes. Okay, so on the first one here, is there a greatest common factor? I look at both of those terms. No, it doesn't have anything in, in common. Um, and it's not difference of squares, so I look, is it difference of cubes then? Yes, it is, because uh, x cubed is a perfect cubed, and 27 is 2, because 27 is 3 to the third power. Okay? So in my first set of parentheses, my first factor is going to be, I take the cube root of both of these, and I keep the minus sign in between it, so it's x minus 3. For the second factor, I take the x and I square it, if this sign is minus, the next one's going to be plus. And then I multiply those two terms together, the x times the, th the 3 times the x, so I get 3x. And the last one plus, it's going to be the 3 squared, the second term squared, 9. This thing is prime. You can't go any further than that, so it's done. Okay, let's look at the second one. Is there a GCF? Well, if I look at both of these terms, they both have a 6 in them. So I can pull that out. So 6, and then I have x cubed plus y cubed. And then I can definitely see x cubed and y cubed, those are perfect cubes. So I could do this as the sum of two cubes this time. So leave the 6 on the outside as the GCF. The first factor for the, diff, uh, the sum of cubes, take the cube root of both of these and keep that plus sign in between it. So it's x plus y. In the second set of parentheses, square the first one, x squared. If this sign is plus, the next one's going to be minus. Multiply them together, so x times y. And then the last term is the last one squared, plus y squared. And now it is completely factored. So why don't you do yourself a favor and try these three problems that apply some or difference of cubes in some kind of way. All right, let's see how you did. Here are our answers, and on the first one, very straightforward, uh, it's the sum of two cubes. So if I take a look at that, of course, the cube root of x cubed, x, cube root of 1,000 is 10. So uh, this one's a sum of two cubes, x plus 10 in the first set of parentheses. Then I square the x to get x squared. For the middle term, if this one's plus, the next one has to be minus. And then it's just 10 times x, 10x. And then the last one is plus 10 squared, 100. Okay. So on uh, the second one, 
the two terms individually are also perfect cubes because the cube root of 8 is 2 and the cube root of 27 is 3. So this is the difference of two cubes. So taking the cube root of the first term, I get 2x. The second one, I get 3y. Okay. So uh, for the second set of parentheses, whenever I go to square the first term, remember that the 2 is going to get squared too. So it's 4x squared. If the sign's minus, the next one's plus. Okay. And now multiply the two terms together. I get a 2 times a, a 3 gives me a 6, and then my x times my y. And then finally, my last term squared, remember the 3 gets squared as well, so it's 9y squared. Okay, number 3 was a super tricky one. On number 3, x to the 6th minus y to the 6th, I first factored it as the difference of two squares. And the reason why you can do it as the difference of two squares is because we have something like this. We got x to the third, and if I square that, you know I'm supposed to multiply those two together, and I get x to the sixth. Okay, so it is a perfect square. So whenever you factor it as the difference of two squares, I get x cubed plus y cubed, and then x cubed minus y cubed. Both of those are cubes. They're perfect cubes. They're the sum of two cubes and the difference of two cubes. Okay, so what's in, here let me switch the color here, maybe make it all red. So this first factor factors as x plus y and then x squared minus xy plus y squared. All right, and then the second one factors, let's see, the second one x cubed minus y cubed factors as x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. Okay, now this is not the only way you could have done it. You could have gone, oh, we're doing cubes, so 6 is a perfect cube, and it is a perfect cube because x to the second power cubed is equal to x to the sixth. So I know it is a perfect cube. So whenever you go to factor this as a perfect cube, this is the difference of two, um, you get and this is up here at the top. Where we go? Up here at the top, we got x squared minus y squared. That's the, the cube root of both of those. And then you take the first term squared, you get x to the fourth. Switch the sign from minus to a plus, then multiply them together, x squared plus y squared. And then the last one, y to the fourth. Okay, so if you look in the first set of parentheses, you can notice that that's the difference of two squares. So x plus y and x minus y which is what we have down here at the bottom is those two. The problem is what we have in this, the third set of parentheses, this third factor, apparently it factors further. What we said before is that whenever you use the difference of, uh, the difference of the sum of cubes pattern, whatever is left over should be prime. Well, the exception that I mentioned was it should be prime as long as you started with perfect cubes. But here we didn't. We started with six powers, which means that this thing could be factored, and obviously it could. The problem is you might be stumped onto how to factor what was there. So it turns out factoring at first as the difference of two squares was actually a lot more helpful. Okay, so that concludes our video on binomials, either the difference of two squares or the sum or difference of two cubes. In the next video, the last objective, it's all going to be about factoring by grouping.